What's going on, everybody? So today we're going to waterproof some RC receivers. Now, a lot of you have your receivers in a box. Maybe you have that box waterproofed, but there's really, truly no way to guarantee the waterproof of that box. Yeah, with the foam seal and a little grease and the O-ring, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, you can maybe seal one up, but you can't 100% guarantee that it's going to be waterproofed. You don't want to get out there on the trail or something, something go wrong, you know, burns out a receiver, something like that. Especially some of these receivers can be pretty expensive. Now, the one we're going to do today, this uh, three-channel Fly Sky remote, this works for any of like the three GT3Bs, GT3C, GT2. Um, now, the, like the GT5 that a lot of people are using uses a very similar uh, receiver, but a little bit different. Um, this works good. Also run the six channel ones for uh, my GT3C, which is hacked to eight channels. Uh, this will work on any of the flies guy, uh, whether you use, you know, three channel, two channel, five, six channel, eight channel, uh, whatever you're using. Now this Traxxas uh, receiver here, these are not cheap. Um, so you want to waterproof it um, if you can. Uh, you don't want it to get messed up. So what I'm going to show you on the fly sky remote is going to go for these. Now, on this one, you're going to have four screws on the back. Some receivers have that, like the Traxxas has little tabs on the side you have to pop and sort of pry open. But they're all going to come apart in some fashion. Just look for how yours is sealed um, and go ahead and pop your receiver apart, which we'll do in a second. First, I want to show you guys what we're going to use to seal uh, our receiver. We're going to use what's called a conformal coating. Now, this is a silicone-based conformal coating. I'll put a link. I got this on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. Big bottle of it. It comes with a couple of paint brushes. I'll put a link in the description of the video. Yeah, throw it on the ground. That's good. Put a link in the description to this. Uh, they also make a urethane-based one. I like the silicone-based one. It takes a little longer to dry, uh, but I think it gives you a little bit better coating. Kind of want to use it in a ventilated area. It sort of stinks like nail polish. Uh, but, you know, no big deal if you're in a big room. You know, obviously don't do not do it in a closet or something like that. Uh, but uh, we're going to do that. Now, you're also going to need a little tube of dielectric grease. Uh, you can pick this up at any any auto parts store, um, wherever. You know, a little tube of dielectric grease. Uh, basically, just grease for electrical connections. And that's going to go in your receiver pin area afterwards. You don't have to do that, but it's an extra level of security. Now, if you're going to put this not in a receiver box. You're just going to seal it to the chassis. You're just kind of going to have it out to the elements. You might not want to use the dielectric grease because it's actually going to uh, attract dust and dirt. Uh, that's up to you, but it's you're still going to be able to get lit, you know, water down here. It could corrode the pins. The dielectric grease will keep it from corroding the pins. I have heard of guys spraying Corrosion X or something on these pins. I don't know. Corrosion X is a good spray to keep metal from rusting. The only problem is like Corrosion X and stuff like that is not really a, a coating that will... Like you can use WD-40 silicone spray to do this, but it's going to wear off. Same with Corrosion X. It's not permanent. This stuff is going to seal these electronics. This is actually how you when you buy a waterproof receiver, this is how they waterproof them. This is how they waterproof servos from the factory. Now, mind you, if you do this, you are avoiding your warranty. So, any of you Traxxas guys, uh, if you mess up a receiver and you do this, well, you're out of luck. Traxxas ain't going to help you, but, you know, just be advised. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the four screws out of the back of this, and then we'll take a look at uh, what we've got. Okay, so hopefully the overhead light here is not drowning this out. Um, if it is, I'll try to knock it down in post. Um but usually I film this in there and it's pretty dark, but the camera picks up really well. Um, so, got the back off the receiver. Now, with these receivers, the PCB is actually got a little piece of two-sided tape on the underside here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a razor blade. You could take a, you know, a really small flathead screwdriver. And you kind of, you don't want to pull on the antenna, but what you want to do is, you know, go in here with your thumb and sort of push the PCB down a little bit. Now, the six channels and stuff um, in a lot of your Traxxas radios, you're not going to have a problem. This, a lot of them just fall right out. Um, these, for some reason, they put a little piece in. Now, don't bend it. To, you're kind of going to have to finesse it a little bit. There we go. Popped right out. You see a little piece of two-sided tape right there. Not really sure what that's for, but, you know, it is what it is. So here is your receiver. Be very careful with your antenna. You don't want to break it off. But there is your PCB. 
Now you can tell this is not waterproof because you can tell it, it's not really shiny. It's just a raw circuit board. And this is why you want to waterproof this. Is if any moisture gets in here, it's going to blow it out. Now, one thing to remember, when you coat this, you don't want to coat your pins. So you can either be really careful going around it or you can take some... Uh, I've got a... I bought a bag of like just an absolute ton of receiver extensions for a couple projects. So I'm just going to take some... Uh, I just kind of dedicated some... Uh, uh, servo extensions, some really long ones I'm probably never going to use. What we'll do is just go ahead and we'll plug up all of these ports. So in this receiver, it's going to have four ports because you have three channels plus a battery, like a battery extension uh, port, or like if you're using a nitro or something, you know, that's where you would uh, just plug your, your battery pack into if you were running just a, like a standalone battery pack instead of getting power from your ESC but so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and block off block off all these and you'll see down here you've got still a little bit of it showing it's fine to get conformal coating on that because we've got these seated all the way down and this is where that dielectric grease is going to come in but this now when we paint all the way around this we won't mess up our our uh, our plugs or anything we'll still get good contact uh, but we'll uh, you know we'll have waterproofed our board. Now, once we get it waterproof, we'll hang it from up here. We'll let it dry or not. What I usually do a lot of times, I'll take a hair dryer, kind of blow dry it a little bit, sort of get it tacky, uh, get it, you know, 50% there, and then give it another good coating. You want, you want, you want this on pretty thick. Now, when you clean your brushes, you might you don't want to clean these with water. Uh, clean them with like acetone, nail polish remover, um, something like that, because where this is silicone based, water is not going to wash this brush off. Um, you don't want to, if you can formal coat your brush, you'll never use it again. I use alcohol to clean this with, works really well. So what we're gonna do is real quick, just uh, you know, keep your receiver extensions out of the way, get yourself some, uh, you know, and just start, you know, I usually do the back first, but just start painting it on. You can see a shiny coating Coming on to this, uh, you can kind of see, and once it dries, it's going to look like it's almost sealed in an epoxy. I've heard people doing this with hot glue and all that, but this stuff works pretty good. Now, it is going to allow some heat to build up in your receiver, but, you know, I mean, it's not exactly a huge deal. I mean, unless you plug one of these in wrong and you absolutely, you know, electrically toast it. It's not going to cause your problem. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and paint this baby up. Make sure you get in between all these boards. Make sure you get a very good coating on this. You can't lay this on too thick. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and get this painted up. Uh, we'll go ahead and let it just dry for a little bit, and then we'll give it a second coat, and we'll hang it up, let it sit all night, and then we'll come back, and uh, we'll uh, reassemble it, and we're going to test one of these and make sure it works. Okay, so we've had these drying overnight now, and they're uh, they're good and cured. Now, normally you wouldn't want to hang these by the antenna, but these are pretty light, and if you're careful, it's okay. Uh, and with these little rubber-coated jaws, it's not really going to cut in the antenna. And I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, getting any uh, grooves or anything, you know, where the hanging it from the PCB board would, uh, you know, cause the conformal coating not to take. So these are ready to go. So let's get one hooked up. Let's test it. Okay, cool. So we got our receiver bound up. Steering works. Channel three works. I've got channel four, or not channel four, but the battery port bound up just uh, just because. We've got it in a bowl. Got a little bit of water here. So just to, uh, just to prove this isn't alcohol or anything. Take a swig of it. So go ahead and go ahead and fill that up. So that works good. Now, be real careful trying to do this because you guys might be asking, well, I live at the coast. That's a little different story. If you submerge something in salt water, it's bad. So we're going to try this. I don't even know if this is going to work. 
I got some salt here. Now, if I over salt this, it's definitely going to go out because salt water is extremely like conductive. Um, salt water conducts electricity a lot better. So if it gets in those pins, it's going to cross those pins and cause it to short out. It won't destroy the board, but it could short it out. It could mess it up. But we're going to try just a little bit of solder, maybe try to mimic some, uh, some ocean water. I'd say for that amount of water, that's probably good. Steer this up a little. <laughs> this is definitely a torture test. So let's see if it still works. So still working in salt water. Now this is gonna be gross, but I wanna see if this is about as salty as ocean water. Uh, so we're gonna try this. We're not really there yet, so let's add a little more. Oh, there it goes. All right, so that's about as salty as ocean water. So there it went. It's not working. I just heard the servo go nuts. So you would probably have to corrosion X the terminals. That would probably be your best bet if you live at the coast. I don't have any of that here, so we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. So that definitely. But as soon as we pulled out of the salt water, so in closing, there you go. How to waterproof your receiver? Like we showed, it does work in uh, fresh water, no problem. Salt water, you're going to have to do a little bit more work, and the reason behind that is, if you guys can see right in here these pins are still exposed uh, coming out of the board. Now, mind you, it's still working. Even after all I had to do was blow the salt water off of it, um, you know, it instantly started working again. You know, so that tells me if I were to submerge my vehicle in salt water, get the thing out, dump it out. But if you submerge your vehicle in salt water, you got to worry about your ESC, your motor, all that, you know. Uh, you got to worry about your battery connections. If they're not completely waterproof, it's going to arc your battery, uh, everything like that. So this is kind of the least of your problems is your receiver at that point. But I just want to show you guys, you know, it does work. Maybe later I'll come back and uh, uh, corrosion X this and see uh, if that'll take that over. But I think a heavy dose of dielectric grease would solve that. I'm not near any salt water. If you're at the coast, you might want to revisit that and think about that. But like I said, if you submerge in salt water, you've got bigger issues. But uh, like I said, guys, go ahead and uh, pick some of this up. I will link to the uh, conformal coating down in the description. Hope you like this video. Let me know if you want to see anything else. Catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy.